Well, last week was certainly a heaping helping of canon deliciousness, wasn't it? It was a nice way to start off the year, but as we are still in the wake of 2015, it's time to slow down and pace ourselves with a lighter canon meal. This week's canon fodder starts out with an examination of a particularly interesting moment in Halo 3, a moment many fans are probably very familiar with, the Brute Chieftain at the end of the 6th level, the Ark. Many fans likely know that, if one wants, they can approach the Chieftain for a unique one-on-one -on -one battle, something I personally like to do whenever I get the chance. And yet, we know virtually nothing about him. Let's fix that, shall we? Introducing Chathegus, the Jural Hanai who opportunity always seemed to pass by, until one fateful moment. Chathegus had always known his time would come. For over a decade, he led his pack with fervent conviction and fierce renown. Cathegus had climbed the ranks of Jeral Hanai society, armed with a deadly mixture of cunning and bloodlust. He'd outwitted King Yar mercenaries and liberated the ridiculous mandibles from many a Sanghili's skull. He'd slaughtered scores of humans across countless systems during the relentless march of the Covenant. He'd served the prophets and honored the path. But still, one thing remained elusive to him. Opportunity. That all changed, however, within what seemed like fleeting moments. Tartarus, the self-proclaimed turned prophet ordained chieftain of the Brutes, had fallen in battle, cut down by the traitorous Sanghili Arbiter and the indefatigable human demon at the sight of the Sacred Ring. Tartarus's demise had left a power vacuum amidst a perfect storm, the natural procession of catalyst and consequence quickly accelerating as the Covenant neared the rapidly approaching threshold of the Great Journey. Divine circumstance had brought Chathegus and his pack to a mighty fortress of the gods far outside the galaxy itself. Here, as part of Truth's forces, the Covenant and the Jeral Hanna themselves stood primed for ascension, if only these filthy and unworthy interlopers could be stopped. The demon drew near, and Chathegus himself had been entrusted with halting his progress. As Chathegus saw the demon emerge from the chamber hallway, he almost felt relieved that his formidable stalkers had failed to quell the human's progress just moments earlier. No, this was the Chieftain's divine hour, a fact made ever more clear by the Prophet of Truth's ultimatum heard resounding through the nearby hollow table. You must win this fight on your own. Surrounded by his loyal flight fighters, Chathegus drew fortitude from their frenzy and activated his holy hammer. To take Tartarus's place at the right hand of truth, he needed only to do one thing. Finish this fight. ETA damn quick! Stand by for pickup! <laughs> Well, damn, Grim, that was one epic description of what can often be seen as such a fleeting moment in the game, and yet, it's one that's fondly remembered by many. And, God, in light of all that, it's kind of tragic. It really put a whole new light on that situation as I replayed that section for the gameplay footage. But, moving forward, we have a community question asking about the relationship between the Ranger helmets seen in Halo 2 and Halo 3's Assault Armor. The two have a noted similarity. According to Grimm, while the two systems do have some similarities, they are, at the end of the day, distinct combat harnesses with distinct systems. He does, however, recommend a closer examination of the Ranger helmets seen throughout the Halo franchise, even providing a nice render of the H2A Ranger helmet. Indeed, looking at these helmets side by side, you can see a sort of design progression and the similarities between the variants, especially the one in H2A and Halo Reach. The final section today highlights the birth of a fairly well-known Spartan in the Halo universe, a Spartan whose birthday has, until now, been unknown. On January 28th, 2533, Lucy B091 was, or rather, will be, born. Happy belated, Lucy. And with that, the main article comes to a close, and we arrive at this week's universe entry. And by the way, expect single entries for a while again, Grimm and 343 are still recovering from Halo 5 and 2015 in general. Anyway, this week we have the Forerunner Keyship, known as the Dreadnought. By now, I imagine many are familiar with the ship and its history. During the Forerunner Flood War, the ship was used as part of the conservation measure, ferrying specimens and samples to the Ark that the galaxy could be receded after the firing of the Halo Array. An unknown time after the receding and the departure of the remaining Forerunners, a fragment of the Contender-class Ansela, Mendicant Bias, found its way into the Keyship systems, hoping to contact humanity and bring them to the Ark. Unfortunately, it crashed on Janjir Qom, homeworld of the San Shayum. After centuries trapped on the world, a small number of San Shayum boarded the ship and left. They eventually encountered the Sanghili, and after a bloody war, the two would unite to form the Covenant. Using a piece of Janjir Qom that had been ripped up by the Keyship, the two species constructed High Charity, 
and the key ship, known as the Dreadnought, would be placed in its center. During the Great Schism, Truth detached the ship from High Charity, heading to Earth to activate a portal to the Ark. In December of 2552, the Dreadnought finally arrived back at the Ark after untold centuries away, and the fragment of mendicant bias that it held reunited with the rest of himself. Though humanity was able to establish a base on the Ark in 2555, the status of the Dreadnought remains unknown. For now. And that does it for this week's cannon fodder, light to be sure, but still very sweet. Especially with the background on Shathegas. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.